Welcome to my bio lesson. My name is Duncan and you can call me Duncan. This is a short video made by me and it is intended to act as a form of recap in preparation for your upcoming exams. So I realized that over the years, students have trouble with the chapter Transport in Humans and it can be a bit dull when you are learning this chapter. Some of the details may have been missed out, especially for Heart Cycle, which can get quite confusing after a while. But not to worry, you are not alone. I will be covering some sections of Transport in Humans and hopefully your understanding will be better by then. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we will be getting our brains running with a short case study. So, I was wondering if you guys heard of Golden Blood. Yep, not this kind of golden blood, but the rare genetic condition known as golden blood. Okay, so here's a short article about a man with this rare genetic condition. Okay, so pause the video for a quick read up. But generally, it is a story about how this guy had to donate his blood and it was needed pretty badly. Yeah. So upon, upon reading this article, there are few questions to be asked okay so why is it termed golden blood why do so few people have it uh, why did the nurse eyes uh, widen you know and lastly why do you think it is hard for the man to stay healthy despite the fact that he had this very rare genetic condition yeah so it's a very good habit and it's always important to ask questions when dealing with something you are unfamiliar or unsure about. Yep. Okay. So in this case, we can start to formulate those solutions based on what we know. We see that the nurse was reading the label, which should indicate the details of the blood, and hence, she should be able to see some form of blood group that is on the label. Okay. So if she was so shocked, that must mean that the blood group must have been pretty rare. Okay, and we know that from the chapter heredity, okay, blood groups that lack the antigen are recessive. And hence over time, after many generations, these blood groups start to become rarer. Okay, you agree? Coming back to the question, this must mean that this person probably has a rare blood group and does not have any and does not have many antigens. Mm -hmm. In fact, we can even say that there probably isn't any antigen on his red blood cells, since there is a special term for it, golden blood. Okay, recall that if you have the antigen, you do not have the antibody, and that goes for its conjugate reasoning. Having no antigen makes you have the antibody. This probably means that this special man has all the antibodies and hence he was probably trying to donate to another person with a similar condition. In fact, golden blood is a term for people that do not have any rhesus antigens at all. A kind of blood group just like the ABO system. One time, a baby with golden blood needed blood very urgently and there were only four people available for donation during that time. The closest person had to cancel work, cancel all of his plans, and fly many miles to the hospital just to donate his blood to the baby. So I guess that golden blood can be a blessing or a curse at the same time. As for the last question, why do you think it is the, it's hard for a man to stay healthy that will be a question that I will leave to you. Okay, so after our case study, the next best thing that we would do is uh, obviously to go through our blood group section in transport in humans, right? Because we talked about uh, golden blood and how it does not have any rhesus D antigens. But in our O levels, okay, and this goes for both combined and pure science students, for our O levels, only the ABO system will be tested. Okay, the research system will not be tested in our syllabus, and it is more on uh, A levels or 
poly okay if you want to do a bio related course that is where the research system would come you, uh, you will come across the research system more often right but for the ABO system okay it's quite simple it's it's basically on how we decide whether the blood groups are compatible or not okay that's the whole rationale of learning blood groups in our bio syllabus all right this is the blood group compatibility table okay and this consists of both the ABO system as well as the Rhesus D antigen system so your ABO system is your typical blood group O, blood group A and B, A, B and your Rhesus D antigen is your O minus, your O plus and your plus will be the positive your, your positive will mean that you have the antigen and your negative will mean that you don't have the antigen but for our O level syllabus as I've just mentioned uh, the Rhesus system will not be tested so typically your O level uh, red blood cell compatibility table will be much simpler you'll just show O, A, B and uh, A, B right but uh, unfortunately this is not how you wanna uh, tackle questions you, you don't want to memorize this compatibility table at all in fact I'll show you how you're supposed to tackle these questions and it's actually fairly simple alright whenever you are met with a blood compatibility question the first thing you want to do is you want to you wanna identify your donor alright so who is the one donating his or her blood who is the one giving away his or her red blood cells all right that is that will be your donor and you want to identify that really really quickly okay the next thing after the donor would obviously be your recipient okay so identify your recipient who is done receiving the blood who is the one that is going to take in those red blood cells all right that would be your recipient okay so identify both of them first is really important because you want to know if you are you are taking a look at the antigens or if you want to take a look at the antibodies it is really really crucial that uh, you do not mess that one up yeah because that will cost you uh, most of the marks actually if you uh, if you don't get that right okay so first thing you want to do is identify both of them you know just put a side note uh, maybe annotate at the side of your paper and that should be fine okay just make sure that you know the donor and you make sure that you know the recipient of the transfusion process okay after differentiating your donor and your recipient the next thing you want to do is you want to find out the antigen of your donor okay so because your donor is going to be giving away his or her red blood cells all right you are more concerned of the spike receptors on the red blood cells because uh, you really don't want them to clump with the antibodies in the recipient's blood right and uh, clumps in your blood vessels are, are really quite nasty they're, they're not really nice to have you know they, they can cause your heart muscles to not have enough oxygen okay and that's bad we don't want that okay so for your donor make sure that you know what antigen that the donor has okay if uh, if you're looking for the antibody of the donor because in the blood transfusion process you don't just give your red blood cells you give uh, blood okay uh, not to worry about the antibodies because they will be extremely diluted in the recipient's blood as long as you are giving only uh, say 500 ml that would be okay so they will be very diluted your an the antibodies from the donor will not have an effect at all alright so do not need to worry about the antibody of the donor just make sure that you know the antigen of the donor that is the most important next would be the antibody of your recipient right because your recipient is the one receiving the blood okay they have a lot of antibodies they are free to attack any antigen that is structurally similar to them okay you don't want that because same thing you're gonna form clumps okay, it's gonna clog your coronary heart vessels and that is not what you want at all alright so remember donor you wanna look at the antigen recipient 
you want to look at the antibody okay and obviously if you want your blood to be compatible you want both not to be identical at all so just to recap you want to you want to identify the donor so just to recap you want to identify the donor you want to identify the recipient and with that you will know what antigen the donor has you will know what antibody the recipient has and after that all is well you will be able to know if the blood is compatible or not based on whether the antigen and antibody are identical all right and that is for blood compatibility table okay so next we will be going on to the heart